Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how I put together and installed this BetterBox mailbox. It's a cast aluminum mailbox. It's very sturdy, very heavy, and uh, I thought it would be perfect uh, for, the, for the house here. So um, I did a bunch of research trying to figure out which one I wanted, and this guy, uh, Bobby Joe Jones, is amazing. Answered all my questions, and that's why I decided to go with this one. I wanted to mount it uh, in the grass, but I didn't want the weed eater to beat it up, right? So I decided to cut some pavers, and uh, here you'll see where I put the hole. I happen to have these post uh, things, post bases, I don't know what they're called. Uh, anyway, I happen to have them, and I decided to just stick them in there and concrete them in to just use less concrete, honestly. Uh, I only bought two bags, probably should have bought three. Uh, but anyway, you'll uh, see the whole process here if you watch the whole video. Uh, this is where the pavers ended up, and I decided to pour some epoxy down in the paver holes for a couple reasons. I'll uh, share that later in the video. Uh, here's the stainless steel bolts that hold it in position. I decided to uh, sand out the stainless steel numbers to give a brushed look, and here I am uh, getting them perfectly spaced. So stay tuned. I'll show you uh, the entire installation. It was a great project. decided to put this little light on there. Uh, solar light comes on at night, uh, but I'm um, really, really happy with it and cannot recommend them enough. Well, here's what you get. Two boxes, very, very well packed. Obviously, one is the post. The other one is the mailbox with uh, all the nuts and bolts and stuff. And um, you can see here, better box mailbox. Be sure to do your research. I'll talk about that in a little bit uh, to make sure you actually get the real thing. Uh, there is this Chinese knockoff, which is crap that I actually bought by accident and had to return. Uh, but anyway, you can see they package it very, very well. Um, there's no way it's getting damaged and it's heavy. Uh, the whole assembled thing weighs about 60 pounds. So it is a beefy sucker. The post will stand up by itself. And as you can see here, the uh, box is actually packaged very well. Also, uh, they package the bracket and the flag separately. And I really want to talk about this guy a little bit, Bobby Joe Jones. This guy really geeks out over these mailboxes. Uh, takes a lot of pride in the design. Uh, they're cast, uh, they're uh, painted and then hand finished to give you that kind of patina look. I decided to go with the green one, obviously. They call it Verde. Uh, but anyway, this is all the stuff you get. And uh, back to this guy, Bobby Joe. He was amazing. I called him, talked to him for like 15, 20 minutes on a Sunday, uh, asked him a few questions. He actually told me I wanted to order one with stainless steel hardware, uh, meaning the knob, but uh, they don't come that way. So he told me that I could just go buy a knob at Home Depot and it would fit because it's a standard fitting. Uh, really, really great guy. Uh, you get two different flag options if you want a more modern look, I guess, or a European look. Uh, but um, it's... Uh, really well built you know here you can see a little close-up you can have this thing you know I've never seen this before and I honestly didn't want to confuse the mailman or mail lady whatever mail person but it's got to be sensitive to that stuff I guess uh, but anyway uh, I decided to go with the flag you'll see that also the flag covers up the track when it's down so it really looks better in the down position uh, when you put that thing in there it you can see it see what I mean it uh, that's what it looks like in the in position, and it just looks unfinished. Um, anyway, here's the knobs that I was talking about. Uh, evidently, this is a standard screw size uh, because I was able to just find a stainless steel knob, brushed stainless at Home Depot with no problem at all. They give you a couple different screw ideas. Uh, this one... Uh, I'm sorry, they give you a couple different knobs. One knob is for the uh, little flag. You just screw it in there after you've installed it. Uh, and that is the knob to pull it in and out. And then the uh, other screw there was actually for the knob to pull the mailbox door open. Uh, they're both threaded the same. 
uh, which is you know convenient, uh, especially if you wanted to use this style flag uh, and uh, change out the knobs to silver, right? You could change them both out if you wanted to. I really think they should include that, but they didn't. Uh, it seems like they should have that option. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is how this screws in, and then you just slide the thing back and forth if you wanted to use this style. Like I said, I decided not to. I was torn for a little while, because I, th I do think it's neat, but I don't like the way it looks. Uh, when it's not, when it's in that position there. Uh, so in this box, you get the uh, the bracket and the uh, thing that the numbers go on. Uh, you have to buy your own numbers, and two-inch numbers uh, fit perfectly, depending on how many numbers are in your on your house number. And then this is the bracket that goes in there. And I will tell you that there is a hole in the uh, post that you don't use if you don't buy the uh, newspaper box. So they offer this thing in a newspaper box model where it's just this additional box that mounts down under it. And um, you can put that in if you want to. Uh, but you end up with this empty hole if you don't use that part. Uh, so here's the letters I ordered from Amazon. Uh, they're stainless steel letters, I'm sorry, numbers, and they were polished. I could not find sanded uh, or, you know, satin finish or brushed finish. That's the word I'm looking for. I couldn't find brushed finish uh, uh, numbers uh, in stainless. I definitely wanted stainless. So you'll see in the video I decided to just sand them myself, and it came out fine. Uh, I think if you had a sandblaster or some better way of, of doing that, it would come out better. Uh, but uh, you can see here, that's a two inch, and they fit perfectly, absolutely perfect. And uh, I really like the silver with the, uh, not only does it match the house, but the silver with the verde, I think it looks just great. So here I'm just kind of holding the thing in position. Uh, there are two screws that screw into the back of the box that hold it in position. And that's all I put, uh, I took a spray paint can and sprayed the uh, square that I wanted and you know i positioned it slightly closer to the driveway than the old mailbox for a couple reasons uh, one i needed to leave the old mailbox in place you can see it uh, back there and you can see how the weed eater has started to beat it um, that's one of the reasons why i decided to do this paver thing around it because it's only a matter of time before they just knock the surface right off of the post if i didn't do this so I positioned uh, four pavers uh, in a design that was a square, and then I just dug a hole. Uh, I like to load the dirt into the buckets so you don't end up with a total mess in the, um, in the yard there that you have to deal with. Here I'm cutting the pavers. Uh, I positioned them, like I said, in a square. By the way, this Milwaukee uh, concrete saw is the baddest saw ever. I mean, the thing is so powerful. It cuts perfectly. You don't have to fool around with gas or anything. Fantastic saw for cutting concrete uh, or steel. It comes with a with an abrasive uh, blade also. Uh, but anyway, I just cut cut them to fit and uh, made a little design uh, in order to make a perfect square with the pavers that I had. I had to leave a uh, box in the middle, uh, which is totally fine because you can't see. Uh, you, you won't be able to see that. You'll see what I mean. The post will cover it. Here's what I look like when I'm trying to put a puzzle together, evidently. Um, just kind of experimenting. And I guess uh, it dawned on me right about now uh, that I could move that and make a box. And that center square would be covered. <laughs> anyway, there we go. I guess I moved it a little bit more. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, anyway, there's the final design. So what I'm doing here with a grinder is beveling the edge. When you cut the block, obviously there's a kind of a cut line, a straight line, right? And these pavers are beveled on the edge. So I just tried to reproduce the edge and make them look like they weren't cut, kind of worn off around the edges. Uh, they came out really nice. I think it's a step that you shouldn't skip if you do this. Uh, otherwise, you end up with what looks like cut pavers, and they don't match the rest. All right, I sped this up quite a bit. 
These are post concrete post bases that I just happen to have. I put them in there because I realized that I didn't have enough concrete and I didn't really want to go back to Home Depot. Uh, also, I wanted to give more of a solid concrete, at least in some area, to bolt into because I'm using lag bolts to secure the mailbox in place. Uh, but anyway, I mixed up the concrete and I poured it in and flattened it out. It was really, really pretty basic here. Uh, once I got it uh, pretty flat, I put the pavers in. See that in a second here. And, you know, I really should have gone and gotten another bag of concrete uh, because I needed it to be up higher. You know, it, uh, so, you know, I kind of did a cheesy thing here and just dug out the concrete and put, the, put dirt in it. <laughs> it turned out to be fine. There's plenty of concrete there uh, to hold everything in position, but I needed it at least level with the grass. Uh, it probably could have been slightly higher. I measured off of my neighbor's mailbox for a final height. So I knew I had a couple you know, inches to play with. Uh, but anyway, uh, once I got it level, uh, just you know, using a rubber mallet to beat on the pavers and you know, beat them into position, uh, that was all there was to it. I let it set up overnight. And uh, that was actually the worst part, right? Waiting. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, here's what the uh, final final thing looked like. There's the old mailbox still in place there. And here's the next morning. My wife came out and helped me. I have to kind of stand back and look at it. I needed to just double check the measurements before I drilled holes and make sure that it was, you know, the mailbox police weren't going to have a problem and that it was the right distance in off the street, which everything lined up. So that was really great. Here's a few stills, uh, just so you can see what it looks like. I still haven't uh, installed that little bracket underneath. And I haven't installed the flag or the knobs. Uh, but uh, here's just some close-ups, uh, just in case you didn't get a good enough look uh, before. So obviously I still have the old mailbox there, right? And that was the grass that I removed. I'm saving it uh, for that spot where I finally do remove that mailbox. But um, it is uh, set up as long as I'm willing to wait. I probably should have waited two or three days. Uh, and that's actually why I poured some epoxy down in the holes. You'll see that in a minute. Uh, but I got impatient and I said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and drill these holes. And that is what I do next here. So I positioned it once again, uh, marked it with a Sharpie, and then I was worried that it would crack. So I drilled it with an eighth inch bit first, and then uh, drilled it with the half inch bit after. And it didn't crack, uh, it was totally fine, but it was very obvious that the concrete wasn't uh, hard enough. Uh, you can see here, I put epoxy down in the holes, uh, to compensate for that and my experience with epoxy and concrete is really really good the epoxy uh, you know combines with the concrete or leaches into it in a way that just causes it to be so much stronger uh, in my opinion than just plain concrete i was careful not to fill it up all the way to the top of the paver because as i stuck the sinker down in there uh, i didn't want it to overflow if you get this epoxy on the surface anywhere of the paver, it will uh, make it a darker color, and um, and it you know it's just, it's hard to get off. Uh, it kind of stains it, as you can see. Um, it would look like that little spot right there in the front. That's actually sweat. I'm dripping sweat here. Uh, but uh, if that was epoxy, that little dark spot would be there forever. So you don't want to get this stuff all over the place. Um, anyway. Uh, Put it back in position. Remember, this thing is uh, like 60 pounds, so it is kind of uh, kind of heavy for me anyway. And um, my experience with these sinkers is you can actually drop them down into the hole too far, especially if you drill the holes too deep, which I did. Uh, so I fastened them on uh, to the bottom of each bolt here uh, to hold them in position, and then just kind of lowered them in carefully uh, so that. You know, I had something to uh, to grip onto so they didn't fall all the way down in. Uh, this was relatively easy. Uh, these are just stainless steel with washers. And um, 
once I push them down into uh, either the bottom of the hole uh, or about two inches up so that I could, uh, yeah, see what I mean? So that one's pretty deep there. So what I did was I pulled it up and tightened it and that expands the um, sinker and helps it to grip the side walls of the hole better. So this, uh, another Milwaukee tool here that I absolutely love is their power ratchet. Uh, this is the 12 volt power ratchet and it produces about 65 pounds of torque and that's a lot. Uh, I had no idea. I've broken off a few uh, bolts with this. Probably wouldn't break these off because they're pretty big. Uh, but if you get this thing, just be aware of just how powerful 65 pounds is. So here I've turned my attention to the numbers. I ordered the stainless steel polished numbers. As I mentioned, I couldn't find them in a brushed finish. So all I did was took a sanding disc and sanded them out. It took way longer than I expected. And the result is pretty decent. Uh, you can see the difference here between a shiny one and a brushed one. Uh, I actually went down uh, a couple grits in sandpaper to finish this up and get the effect that I wanted uh, but in the end it's totally good enough and uh, it matches the knobs and matches uh, you know frankly the rest of the house uh, nothing is polished and uh, so they they really didn't look very good polished uh, here's the uh, uh, you know what do you call it the knob and uh, you can see it's it's pretty close uh, it looks great once installed. So I just went through and did each one of them. Uh, it took a while. And then, um, like I mentioned, I went down a grit. Uh, but, you know, you just have to have some patience. And uh, it does beat on your fingers a little bit. But uh, it's certainly very effective at creating a uh, satin finish or brush finish on, uh, on stainless. Uh, I don't know what these grits are. Probably, if I'm looking at it now in the video, that was uh, that was 80, and this is probably 60. Yeah, 60. And um, that produced a pretty decent finish. And this is the final uh, step. 60 was the final that I uh, went with. Here, I just positioned the numbers. You know, I just eyeballed them. The sticky adhesive on the back of these is really, really good. It's that black exterior 3M product. And even in some places where it's super thin, it has held up really great. Uh, I think it's, I bet it's six months. Uh, this video is probably six months old uh, when I did this uh, actual project. And they're holding up just fine. So I just used uh, masking tape to you know, line them up, keep everything straight, uh, did both sides, and then, um, came out pretty good. Here are the uh, thing that you put on for the to hold this. It just goes on with uh, two little rubber washers to keep the water out and then it bolts in from underneath and there's really nothing to it. Uh, you, this is all aluminum, right? So you want to be careful not to tighten down anything too tightly uh, because you'll strip it or you'll pull it straight through. Um, afterward, this a bracket goes on the bottom here along with uh, two more screws that uh, stabilize the mailbox on the bottom up against the post. It's extremely solid once it's all put together. I will say that underneath that bracket on the post there is another hole and I talked about that earlier. That hole is for the mailbox, uh, or I'm sorry, the, what do you call it, the um, uh, newspaper attachment. Uh, the newspaper box that you can get for underneath just goes in between the bracket and the box, and they give you an extra hole for that. Uh, I kind of wish that the extra hole wasn't there. Uh, I haven't actually done anything with it. I should just put a little plastic thing in it. You can see it there if you look really, really closely. Uh, but, um, but that's it. Here's the uh, finished product. 
and it came out really great. I mean, I just couldn't be happier with the quality, the finish, uh, the assembly. Uh, everything about this project uh, worked really, really well. And like I mentioned, this was about a six month ago project and that mailbox isn't, hasn't budged. It's solid. Those bolts are holding up beautifully. Uh, I, I do like the flag option over the uh, little pull thing, as I mentioned. I did have to fool around with that a little bit to get it to be tight in there. Here's a close-up of my brushed work. <laughs> um, and here again, if you look really closely, you can see that other hole on the post that you don't use. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching. I know it's kind of a long video on a mailbox, but if you're interested, I really tried to show you uh, everything you could possibly experience when you install one of these. Uh, so if this helps you to make a buying decision, well, that's really great. Please hit that like button. And if you like uh, completely random videos, uh, please subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Help support and grow the channel. I almost forgot. So I installed this little light uh, out there. It's just a little solar light. I got it from Amazon. I'll put the link down below. Uh, but it lights up really nice. Uh, it stays on almost all night and it really looks neat from the street and you know just kind of makes me smile when I look at it. <laughs> so I get a lot of compliments on it too. Uh, but uh, it easily just hooks right in there. You can remove it or replace it. Uh, there's no modification to the mailbox to get the little light to work. Uh, but, uh, but that's it. All right, once again, thanks for watching. See ya.